Hypokalemia is relatively common, especially in sick hospitalized animals. And the same things that we've talked about previously about what's controlling potassium, how much it's excreted, how it's shifting between intra and extracellular fluid spaces, and the intake or administration, they're all going to play into how much potassium we have in our body um, and when we have a decrease in potassium levels. So the first one we're going to talk about um, in terms of hypokalemia, again, decrease in potassium, or loss or excretion of potassium. So loss or excretion of potassium. And of course, we know that our kidneys are very, very good at getting rid of potassium, but sometimes we get rid of even more potassium. And so this happens with diuresis. I mean, so things that cause diuresis of potassium or diuresis in general include things like intravenous fluids, so you might cause it in your patient. Uh, animals that are polyuric, polydipsic, and why might they be that? Well, maybe they have an inability to concentrate their urine, so chronic kidney disease can cause it. Um, animals that just love drinking water. I once had a Labrador who just loved drinking water, so psychogenic polydipsia. Um, certainly glucosuria, and this relates kind of to the previous one. So glucosuria um, and even mannitol results in diuresis because it kind of pulls water more quickly. And certainly diuretics, especially loop diuretics, any non-potassium sparing diuretics. And so this is going to speed up your tubular flow and result in excretion of more potassium. There's also some special cases um, and right now we're talking renal loss, so right, so these are renal. And so the special cases are a little harder to understand, um, but one of them is actually something called ketonuria, and that just means where you have ketones in your urine. And we can see this in animals in a negative energy state, so cattle um, that have recently calved potentially, um, milk fever can cause it, and animals with diabetic ketoacidosis. And so ketones have um, a charge on them that obligates excretion of a cation, meaning they have to get rid of some sort of positive. Of course, you don't want to get rid of sodium because it's so important. So um, you're getting rid of the ketone, so then you're also going to get rid of potassium. So it's called obligate excretion of a cation, and so that's what can cause it. So we see that with um, again, with ketonuria. A little bit harder to understand. We may talk about it some with diabetes. So the other places that we can lose potassium are in vomiting. So we GI loss. We can lose a lot of things in vomiting. Um, so vomit uh, and salivation in large animals, vomiting in small animals. And we can see loss in sweating in horses. And again, this isn't just like he's slightly perspiring. This is like a horse who's just really exerted himself. All right, so loss or excretion. Now we're going to move on to the next one. And these are going to be kind of the opposite of what hyperkalemia. So now, instead of having an intracellular to extracellular shift, now you're having an extracellular shift to intracellular space. that there we go and so this was the opposite of what we had before the big one again is going to be metabolic alkalosis so before we had an alkalemia metabolic acidosis now we have a metabolic alkalosis well, really what we have is an acidemia so we have um, an increase in pH in our body, so that's called alkalemia. But we don't do blood gases that often unless we're in ICU. And so what happens is here's our cell. And we have potassium out here normally, some anyway, and you have normally a lot of potassium. But because you don't have a lot of H plus out, you have hydrogen ion that actually leaves your cell and so potassium goes into your cell. So you get an extracellular to intracellular shift, again, due to less H plus out in, the, um, out in the blood. The other time that you can see it is if you actually give an animal insulin. 
Um, or if you give them glucose, it causes a shift of potassium into the cell. So the most common cause of hypokalemia is anorexia. I probably should have led with that one, but so any animal that stops eating rapidly becomes, as long as their kidneys are making urine, they rapidly can become hypokalemic. And we'll talk about all of these a little bit more um, further on.